Today we're going to talk about the residential 20 inch chainsaw and the top two residential 20 inch chainsaws. And I, I use that word loosely, but I want to clarify these are both not pro saws. This is not the 550 XP or the MS261 steel chainsaw. These are made for the homeowner that cuts some firewood, right? They're cutting five, 10 cords of wood a year. I see some people use it for more. That's fine. There's some reasons why you may save you some money. Or there's reasons that you probably should not, and those reasons would be life and weight and performance and all those sort of things. But today let's focus really, let's talk about the steel MS-271 and the Husqvarna 455 Rancher. And these two saws, they're the top of the market, guys. These are your top two saws that you're going to get in a 20-inch firewood cutting saw that's really geared towards the homeowner. Lots of advantages of going with these two brands. One is, is longevity. They've been around for, for years and years and years since... Uh, I mean, Husqvarna's a 300-year-old company. They haven't been making chainsaws that long, but they're an old company with a lot of history and a lot of knowledge and build a ton of chainsaws and know how to make them last. In steel, they've been making chainsaws since 1926. They're coming up on 100 years. So both these companies know how to do it right. But why would I want to buy the steel over the Husqvarna or the Husqvarna over the steel? Maybe this is the right saw for you. Maybe this is the right saw for you. I'm going to break down a few of the differences today. I'm not going to tell you which one to buy. I'm going to show you some reasons why the Husqvarna might be better and why the steel might be better. To give you a, uh, an idea as far as price, they're always within 20, maybe 30 bucks of each other. They know where they need to be. The steel is going to come in at price X and Husqvarna is going to come in a little bit lower or a little bit higher. They know where they need to be. So I take price out of the equation. I think the biggest differentiating factor when you go to buy this saw, it's going to be, who's going to take care of me? Who's my dealership? And A, yes, I said dealership. You don't want to buy a chainsaw at a box store or on Amazon. You don't want to buy that online. You need somebody to take care of you. I get, I get comments in our videos quite often is, I can't start this. They bought it online. They don't have the, the back story. So buy it from a dealer who's going to take care of you. If you have a better Husqvarna dealership in your area that stocks the parts, that has the service, it might be a reason to go Husqvarna. If it's steel in your area, you got a reason to go steel. If you're in the Pacific Northwest, hey, it's a little bit harder decision because Carl's sells both. So here we go. The 455 Rancher, the steel MS-271, both 20-inch chainsaws, both putting out 3.5, 3.49 horsepower. So actually, Husqvarna spec is a 55cc, 3.49 horsepower and weighs 12.8 pounds. That is without the bar and chain. And steel is a 50.2, so a little bit smaller CC, and a 3.49 horsepower. So the same horsepower, a little smaller CC, and comes in a half a pound lighter. This is 12.3 pounds. So there's something, right? A little bit of weight. How am I gonna be using this? Am I gonna use it specifically just for cutting firewood for bucking? Weight is always important on a chainsaw, but if all I'm doing is primarily bucking, cutting firewood, the weight becomes a little less relevant. Maybe I have five or 10 acres and I'm walking around my property and I'm cleaning up, the weight becomes more relevant. So advantage steel is in the weight. What's next? Let's kind of start at the back of this saw. Let me set them side by side. Traditionally a Husqvarna has always been a little bit slimmer, a little skinnier saw. Well, not so on this one. This 455 is a bulkier, fatter saw. Not a big deal, but I have people grab the Husqvarna and it just feels better to them. They like the way it feels. They grab the steel and they don't like the way it feels. Or vice versa. So part of it is put it in your hands and feel it. Let's take a look at this, this choke and throttle control setup and the advantages. So to start a Husqvarna, I have a primer. This is something the steel does not have. So on the Husqvarna, I'm going to prime it five times. Can't flood it. I'm just getting fuel up to the carburetor. I also on the Husqvarna have a compression release. So when I pull the rope on this saw, if I put this compression release that's in, it's much easier to pull. Now I have to pull hard on that. I need to rip it fast. Let me put on the steel a minute that does not have a compression release. See that? So on a steel, I for sure need a rip harder. So if I've got some shoulder problems, some arm problems, something in that area that's going to 
prohibit me from ripping hard, from ripping fast? Husqvarna's got a one up there. On the Husqvarna, when I pull out the choke, that's this blue lever right here, when I pull it out, it turns it on. So they kind of made that super easy. I prime it, I choke it, it's ready to pull the rope. And because I have a primer, I'm generally going to pull this rope once, maybe twice, one, maybe two times, and it's going to fire. Immediately what I'm going to do is push this blue lever back in, pull the rope, and it's going to be running. That's how a Husqvarna starts. So on this saw, almost always two to three pulls. Let's grab the steel. And steel uses their master control lever, very common, been around for many years. To work this, I squeeze the trigger and I push all the way down to the choke position. Remember, no primer, no compression release. So I'm relying on my pulls to get the fuel from the tank to the carburetor. So on the steel now, I'm going to go one, two, or three pulls, and it's going to fire. It's going to pop, it's going to burp. I'm then going to manually move this up to start position. I'm going to pull it again. It's going to start. It's going to be going at a high speed. I'm going to click the trigger and it's going to return to run. So a little bit different on that lever control setup. Let's take a look at Here's where I get into some differences that cause frustration on the Husqvarna. Okay, so, so far I think there's some advantages to the Husqvarna when it comes to starting. But on the Husqvarna, we're dealing with a brake, as we are on the steel, but on the Husqvarna, the brake is on the outside in this clutch cover. So let me take this off here real quick. Loosen these bar nuts. Husqvarna uses the 13 mil bar nuts, versus steel uses the 17. Advantage, I don't know, maybe your aim is bad, and so it's a little easier to get the bigger ones. So I'm going to loosen the bar nuts on this. And on the Husqvarna, it is super, super, super important, super critical to make sure the brake is off. So right now, that brake is on. How do I know that chain won't spin? If I pull this cover off, if I pull this cover off right now, I'm opening myself up to a pain in the butt problem. So click this brake off. I might have already done it. I did. Okay, click the brake off, and let's pull this cover off. And why is it a problem if I were to pull this cover off with the brake on. Here's my brake right here in the middle, okay? And if it's engaged, it's tight to this clutch drum right here. And when it comes off of that clutch drum, it shrinks, it collapses beyond that point. And now when I go to put the cover back on, ah, I can't get it on. There's a, there's a little trick to get it, to get past it, but you can only do that trick so many times. On the steel, let's take this off. Remember, we've got the large bar nuts. Spin this loose. It doesn't matter because the brake and clutch are in the body of the saw. They're in the body of the saw. So let me take this off. This brake is on. You can't spin it. This brake is off. I can spin it. Does that make sense? You see that? So why does Husqvarna use a, we call that an external clutch, and why does steel use an internal or inboard clutch? Well, Husqvarna says clutches are hot, and we want to get the heat away from the engine because heat kills engines. Steel says it's a pain in the butt to put a chain on when i got to fight behind the clutch to get to the sprocket. We want that to be right out open. So advantage steel, in my opinion. I can deal with a little bit of heat on the engine. Trust me, they're going to be hot. I don't see the heat from the clutch being the determining factor of the life of the chainsaw. When the sprocket wears out on a steel, it's much easier to change. It's much easier to put the bar and chain on. It stays cleaner. And the bar tensioning, the chain tensioning setup on the Husqvarna is in the cover of the saw right here, accessed from the outside. Steel, it is in the body of the saw. And I'll show you the advantage of that here in just a second. I do want to point out on the steel, this is a plastic cover. On the Husqvarna, this is metal. So probably, no, positively more durable, but does this cause us a problem? I don't see a problem with this, but 
Advantage Husqvarna on the material of the cover. Advantage Steel when it comes to chain on and off and that sort of thing. So when I go to put a chain on the Husqvarna, I got two things I'm dealing with. One, I need to get the chain up behind this sprocket or behind this clutch right here onto the sprocket that's hiding behind that clutch. So it's a little bit of work to get it behind it, not a big deal. And two, when I go and put this cover on, you see this pin by my finger right there? That little pin has to line up with the adjuster hole in the bar, I'll use that term. And if I don't have it lined up, what will happen is I'll put this on, and right now I'm not lined up, and maybe I didn't know I wasn't lined up, then I'll just tighten it up and I can screw up the adjuster screw. Okay, something that, that really causes frustration, you get used to it. I have people that have run Husqvarna saws for 30 years and they don't even think about it anymore. They're just, they're just in the groove. On the steel, when I go to put the chain and bar on, because our pin is in the body of the saw, this bar whoop, lines up in front of me. I can see if I'm on the pin or not. And if I'm not on the pin, I'm going to stop and I'm going to fix it. And when it comes to put the chain on, the sprocket's wide open, right? Much easier to put that chain on the sprocket. Now, Advantage Husky. For years, for years, for years, these 20-inch chainsaws ran a 3 8 chain. At least in the Pacific Northwest they did. We generally have softer woods here, okay? And the softer wood, a 3 8 chain is a very good performing chain. The steel runs a .325 chain. This is a little smaller profile cutter and is really designed for harder woods, okay? So a lot, around a lot of the world, .325 is the way to go. And in fact, in the Pacific Northwest, we are seeing more hardwoods be introduced as we reforest and deal with that. But there's people that are gonna say, hey, I want a 3 inch chain, advantage Husqvarna. Air filtration, just quick pop into this air filtration. Try to get through this here, and there are three screws on each of them. I like the steel setup better, I'll show you. Uh, Husqvarna's got a little flat Phillips combination, fairly small, fairly tight to get in there. Steel's got a much larger screw. I don't even know if this bar wrench is gonna, yep, it'll work. Spin that off. You got three total, two on the starter side, one on the rear other side here. While we're talking about this, one other thing, the Husqvarna does have an adjustable oiler on it. The steel is a set oiler, so why would I want an adjustable oiler? Advantage of an adjustable oiler is I may not need that much oil coming out to lubricate my bar and chain, so I can turn it down. Maybe, I'm, maybe I decided that I want more power, and I'm not doing a lot of big cutting, I drop a 16 inch bar on this thing. By the way, not a bad combination. You see some people go to a 16 inch bar and they really like the power that it, that it brings them because they're never cutting big, big stuff. So they're gonna turn their oiler down, which means they can save oil. All right, that covers off. Steel, bigger screws right there. One, two, three, much easier. I still have to unscrew them all the way, but much easier to get in. They are tight the first time. Much easier to get the bar wrench on and spin it off. So back to adjustable oiler. That's an advantage that Husqvarna has. Let's talk about the caps just real quick. I'll point it out in a minute. There's a lot of hate over the steel caps. It's for two reasons. Uh, one is people have a hard time figuring out how they work. I don't think that's that hard, but it seems to be an issue. And the other is people feel they leak. And uh, I don't see that personally as a big issue. I mean, I don't want it to leak, but I don't see a lot of leaking, but we'll point that out. Here we are, we're into the top of the chainsaw right here. So we can get a look at it. I would say when I look at the air filtration system, the steel's got this nice cylinder, cylindrical thing that screws on and clicks in place. Nice rubber mount that keeps any of that dirt from entering into the carburetor. Awesome filtration system on the steel. Husqvarna, to get that filter off, I need another, I need my screwdriver again to pop that clip off. 
and there's my air filter on that. So capacity of the steel is better. So win that one for the steel. Steel uses a different spark plug. They're using a CMR6H, and Husqvarna is using a WSR7F, sorry, 6F. Uh, just really the old school plug, no big deal, but it's a little bigger surface area on this plug. It doesn't maybe lose the heat as fast. So I think steel does a better job at cylinder cooling. Let's get to these caps real quick, and then we'll kind of wrap it up. We'll see which one's best for you. On the steel, we've got our flip top caps. And all we have to do is flip, give it a about a half a turn, and out it pulls. Click, locked in. Advantage, no tools. Super easy once you get it. I hear they leak a lot, and I think that's more on the bar oil side is where this complaint's coming. And I'm guessing the reason is, is we get some dirt in the O-ring and it doesn't seal right. Okay, so, you know, tip, keep the dirt, the dirt, the sawdust, actually it's not just dirt, the sawdust out of that oil area. On the Husqvarna, it's a traditional cap that I screw all the way loose, so it's a little longer to take that cap off. The disadvantage that I see with this is people will tighten them up, and over heat and time, they get super tight, and I can't get this cap loose. This is why seal changed to a different cap. But on the Husqvarna, I may need to grab my bar wrench, which I'm in the woods. I probably have my bar wrench anyways to loosen my fuel and oil cap. All right, there we go. The two 20-inch stalwarts of the chainsaw industry for the homeowner. Coming in very close on weight. Steel's going to be a half a pound less. Coming in the same on power, 3.49 horsepower. Coming in a little bit different in their designs, right? As far as the, the chain and the bar on and off and the filtration and the starting. But I gotta point out one other major thing that I think is, is worth noting. Steel has a one year warranty. Okay, so off of the shelf, the steel has a one year warranty. At the time of purchase, if you purchase a six pack of the steel mix, you end up with a two year warranty. On the Husqvarna off the shelf, we have a two year warranty, okay? And if you purchase a six pack of their mix oil, like this, you end up with a three year warranty, little mix bottles. Or if you end up purchasing their premix, we call this XP fuel, you end up with a four year warranty. So Husqvarna can really take the cake on the warranty wise. Is warranty important? Yes. Do I see a lot of problems with warranty in two, three, four years? No. Usually if we're gonna have a warrantable problem on a chainsaw, it's within the first six months. So I think it's important to have that coverage, but honestly, both of them protect you well enough to really cover where their, their mix-ups are gonna be. Usually beyond that, first year, second year, any of the problems that we see that would be warranty are a self-induced thing. I, I left bad gas in it. Um, I didn't change my air filter, I sucked dirt in, or some, something like that. But we'll, we'll leave that for another conversation, another discussion. There you go. The Husqvarna 455 Rancher, the Steel MS271. Thanks for watching, thanks for learning. Comment down below, which is your favorite? What do you have experience with? What saw has been a pain in your butt, and what one is not? All right, we'll see you all soon, guys. Hey, this is Josh from Carl's Mower and Saw. Thanks for watching our videos. We're proud of the fact that we've been serving you with the best in outdoor power equipment since 1990. We're glad that you had an opportunity to sit down, watch our videos, learn something about an exciting new product that we have, something that interests you for your property, or really how to use your equipment to the best of its ability. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube. We're excited to share more information with you. See you soon.